start the meeting. Um, today's Education and Human Services Subcommittee of the Town Council. It is 7 p.m. And we'll start um, with a roll call. Citizen member Maria Torres. Present. Town Councilor Jasmine Rivas, present. Councilor <coughs> Antigny. Present. Citizen member <coughs> Gil Provost. Present. Councilor Ortiz. Present. All right. We have a full quorum. So item three on the agenda, review and discuss the confirmation of the town manager's appointment of Stephen Marquez to the historical commission effective immediately until June 30th, 2025, pending state ethics in good standing. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend to town council for confirmation. So moved. Second. 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 Discussion? Tell hey, me. Uh, Madam Chair, through you, uh, Stephen owns a home on Chapin Street, a historic home on Chapin Street, and he has a passion for saving old structures, revitalizing old historical towns. Um, Stephen put in a letter, uh, you know, our community interest form. I know you have it in your packet. Stephen is here tonight if you have any questions of him. Um, and, uh, you know, we're trying to fill this uh, group up so that they have enough members to reach quorums and everything, so it would be a valuable uh, addition to the historic commission. And it's till 2025 so that we, as I stated in the general government meeting, because of staggered terms, to make sure that uh, we fill those terms, and that's one of the openings that we got was the 2025. Okay. So questions? Stephen is here if you have any questions. Right any questions from the right, committee members? members. Stephen, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Um, I just moved recently to Selfridge, and I own a home on Chapin Street, and I love old historical homes, and this town is an old historical town, and I would like to see it revitalize some of the buildings that are, you know, vacant, or homes that are, you know, dilapidated, that are falling apart that I would love to see saved and not torn down and, you know, built into new buildings and things like that. I have a passion for history and uh, I would just like to see this town come back to like what it used to be, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for volunteering and, and applying. Anyone in the audience have any questions? Councilor Dow? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do you have any uh, uh, history before where you used to live on? I lived in a, uh, a historical town before I moved to Southbridge. It was in, in Norwood, Massachusetts, and a lot of the town there was revitalized and saved because it was a, a historical area. And um, I actually work in Norwood still. And I just love the fact that this is an old historical town, i like to see it to be safe. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the audience? Okay. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, all those in favor? Anyone opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Congratulations, thank, thank you, you so for- much. Thank you for volunteering. Those we'll go up Monday night for the town council at say. Okay. Yeah, did you sign? Great. <coughs> right. Item four. <clears throat> Review and discuss confirmation of the town manager's appointment of Severina Rios to Council on Aging effective immediately until June thirtieth, twenty twenty five, pending state ethics in good standing. Entertain a motion to vote to recommend to town council for confirmation. So, so second. Okay. Councilor Ortiz, Councilor Montigny, discussion. Uh, thank you through you. Uh, many of us know Ms. Rios, uh, mm -hmm. longtime teacher, 34 years. Um, she spends a lot of time volunteering down at the community center with the Latino seniors, active member of St. John Paul Parish, active member of our community. I think it gives us a great balance on the Council of Aging. Um, and that would bring that council to a full uh, slate of uh, members, uh, fully staffed council of agent, um, given the activities that we have going on and the much of the 
um, the work that's going down in that center should be a great addition to that council of agent uh, to bring that voice to that group as well. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Um, Mrs. Rios and her family are a staple of this community, and I can't think of a better candidate for the, the last position on the board. Thank you. I also have um, Katie couldn't be here, our community service director. Um, she did have a couple of things to add, so I'll just read from, from the email she sent. She wanted to express that she that Ms. Rios would be a great fit for the board. She's very well known in our community, is always involved in helping others. She's also a great advocate for the Latino community. It would be nice to have um, more diversity on the board. Um, and, and just full disclosure, it is her aunt. She wanted people to know that. Um, and I also agree. Um, Mrs. Rios has been a role model to me um, you know, since we were kids. And she is uh, an incredible advocate in our community. So. And from it. Um, we're seeing quite the transformation down at the community center with our, uh, all the populations, our youth and our seniors. Um, and there's a whole revitalized Council of Agent, seated in a citizens association that has reorganized, the Council of Agent has reorganized. So I think we have great balance down there for the future. I look forward to an exciting year. We have Mr. LaFlesh, uh, John LaFlesh, that's now helping with senior trips. So there's a lot of activity, a lot of great new ideas. Um, the previous administration was great and they kept a steady ship, but now we're seeing the transformation uh, to the next level coming out of COVID. So a lot of it was stagnant because of COVID and we thank all that work that uh, the previous director did, but now we're in a new age, a new group, a new, a new energy. So this uh, brings great, uh, uh, fully complemented as we rebuild the body capacity in a bunch of different areas in town. Um, it's great to have that community down there really active. Okay. Any further questions or comments from the committee? Excuse me, sorry. From the audience? Anyone else? All right. All those in favor? Anyone opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Okay, item five. <clears throat> Review and discuss the town manager's recommendation to declare a surplus from the Southbridge Public Schools, one Hustler, M number 925230, S number 8090290, along with multiple attachments, and allow the town to dispose of, per policy, entertain a motion for approval of disposal to town council. So, so Thank you. This is a very old unit that's uh, currently in no longer being used, unable to be repaired. There's no use for it. We would dispose of it in the means, whatever we could see if we could get some money for it. We'll do that as we do any uh, procurement, but it is of no use to the DPW or the town. And it was uh, uh, fully vetted through DPW and the maintenance department at the school, so we would dispose of it. Any questions? Councilman Thank you, Madam Chair, three to the town manager. This is just a very old snowblower, correct? A big yeah. old snowblower. Gotcha. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? Audience? Councilor Marchetti. Thank you, Madam Chairman, for you. Are you going to scrap this and get some money for the metal? So there's different steps to procure, if I may, Madam Chair, yeah. through you. There's different steps to procurement. First, we would put it out there for bid. If anybody wishes to place a bid, if they give us $10, $100, whatever it is, we uh, the goal through procurement is quite different than procurement of services where you're going for the lowest price. When you dispose of items, you're trying to get the best price. So we would go through whatever necessary steps, which first is put it out there for a bid. Anybody wants to bid on it. If they don't, if somebody wants to pay us 10 bucks or 100 bucks, we would, we would do that. Um, so we're going to try to get whatever we can get for money through that process. We will do what we can to get money for the town coffers. Do we have a lot of other vehicles in town that probably should be auctioned off and maybe it's something we should look to look at? Um, we do. We're putting together that uh, group of items. We have a pickup truck from the school that went to school, fire to school, that. That surplus is a DPW truck down there for surplus. 
probably a couple other things. We're going to gather all that thing in spring and probably look for the best place to do that. We did dispose of the ambulance. We did, uh, we put it out for bid on an auction site and we got zero bids. And then the chief had some contacts where we were able to, uh, Mr. Colinese, you're looking for the school or the redevelopment downstairs? The zoning. Downstairs. Uh, the chief was able to negotiate a price and we got uh, $13,000, I think, for it. So uh, from zero to 13, so we do the best to get whatever money we can for the town. It seems to me you'd get more from the metal on this machine. I've seen the pictures of it a lot, there's a lot of metal here. We will do what we can to get the most money for the town of South Bridge. All right, thank you. Councilor Dell, what's next? Uh, for you, uh, uh, for the manager, uh, where are you going to be promoting that? What website and how we're going to... Uh, uh, we put it out, we did put it out on our website, the we town did, website. We did already? No, we haven't yet. Oh, okay. For what, this? Yeah. No, we haven't put this out yet. Okay. So the first step is for us to declare it surplus, then we'll put it off. Mm -hmm. um, if, we, if you know of people that are interested and want to bite right away, we'll put it out there as soon as possible to get it out. Okay, so it's going to be only on our website? Uh, we'll put it on the website, we'll put it on social media, we'll do whatever we can. Okay, thank you. The most cost expected too, because I don't want to spend $100 on an ad for to get $10. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But the, the procurement law is very specific that uh, as the chief procurement officer and the ability to do this, I can negotiate. Um, somebody wants to come up and say, here's a thousand bucks for it. You sell me the check and I'll give you, a, give you the, the items. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Tigney. Thank you. Um, just to, for what Councilman Marquette was saying, and we're starting to nitpick this now, but like I, I've seen the, the auction sites, but if you were to find the value of the scrap value, like let's say it would yield you $60 in metal, you could set the reserve on the auction for $60, you wouldn't want to sell it an auction for 10 if the metal would yield 60 is the kind of what Councilor Marquette We can would. reject any bids when it comes to okay. procure, when it comes to surplus equipment, it's totally different than other procurement. Okay. If we, we don't have to accept any bids, we can say no, we don't accept your bids and negotiate with whatever as long as we put it out there that it's publicly bid. Any further questions? All those in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item six. Discuss student, teacher, and family complaints regarding administration at Southbridge Middle High School and recommend town council approve a vote of no confidence in the state receivership. Recommend town council approve this action. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Let's open let's open it up to the committee first and then we can have the audience chime in. Any um if I may Councilman Uh most people here know that I'm opposed to the state receivership for a long time. Um there's a time and a place to do all the sorts of things we're talking about. I'm curious, um I, I, I love votes of no confidence. I, I feel like that's what the uh, the vote was from the citizens, the 87% yes vote of the election to take back our schools. That alone was a vote of no confidence from the citizens. So I do I do look at this some in some ways it's kind of redundant, but I, I want to hear uh, where your head was at and where, uh, what's, where are you coming from with this? I, I understand that there's uh, complaints and stuff, but kind of... Looking to hear more about your thoughts, Madam Chair. So in light, we've had a community forum where we had about 100 um, families, students, um, teachers, people in attendance and on Zoom. And people want the town council to take action. They feel like after the vote in June where the majority of the town did vote, um, you know, um, that they want to take back the schools. I think people felt that we haven't done enough as a council. And I think having a vote of no confidence really backs up what our citizens have already voted for, but it's a formal action that we're taking as a council. 
we are backing up our citizens and showing a united front. Um, we will also be asking the school committee to do the same thing. Um, and I think that shows unity in our community. And again, this was a request from many of the people in that forum who, who also came to the town council meeting. Um, and that's where that is coming from. So our citizens have asked for us to take action in a formal way. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, if I still have yeah. the floor, thank sure. you. I, uh, I hate to, to do a knee jerk reaction to something. Well, I am obviously fully in support of this. As we know, the commissioner is stepping down um, and he's recommending Russell Johnston, at, which is the associate commissioner. Um, I will share with you that we had a meeting uh, between the town manager, Charlie Blanchard, uh, Councilor Daniel was there, Councilor Adams, um, another woman from the state, but also Russell Johnston. This was the day before the election, and I asked Russell, I said, what would you do if it came overwhelmingly yes for the, the vote tomorrow to take back our schools from the citizens? If the citizens came back, and I even said 80, 90 percent, which, it, and thank you very much for the 87 percent, um, I said, what would you do? He said, absolutely nothing. We'd proceed as follows. So, I, while they just continue to show us no love at all, um, I think they are going to have the spotlight on them to make the right call. And if they don't do it, when Russell Johnston lands, I feel like it might be better timed at this point, because you actually give the person the opportunity to sit back and look and say, okay, we're gonna end receivership. Um, it give him a chance to, you know, go back on his, like, I'm, I, Councilor Daniel was there, I mean, he said this to us, this was the final, this was the closing statement of the thing, and I said, really, you're gonna do nothing. Okay, proceed as follows. So, I'm the type of person to sit back and I'd like to watch him throw a grand interception and then give him a vote of no confidence, because it is, unacceptable the way that this state has treated this community, especially our children, to hire countless, over a dozen administrators to run four buildings and they can't even get it right ever. And all they do is pad their salaries and move and jump from place to place and they so do not care about our children. But the spotlight is going to be on these people in just a few weeks. And I think if we just give them the opportunity, all eyes on them, they don't do it, then you do this. That's just my that's just my thought. I, I'm I'm on board with getting the schools back at all costs, but you know the state does not agree with any of us on the school. Russell Johnston said it himself. This is a game of chess to get the thing back, and I just don't want to throw our queen out in the middle of the, the board right now. I, I just think you give a few weeks, and and the, you know the tides are going to turn. And if they don't, I I would completely agree with you. I I would potentially entertain a motion to postpone it um, just because he's stepping down on the 15th of March. Is that correct? Did I read that somewhere? Yes. I, I think yes. so. But uh, <clears throat> if anybody else has anything, I'm, I'm good right now. I'm good. Uh, the uh, commissioner's meeting is on Tuesday, and it's on the agenda for Tuesday's meeting that he will be stepping down. So I'm guessing that means there'll be a lot of vacation time. Yeah. Right. Any... Anyone on the committee first? Oh. All right, um, Councilor Lazo and then uh, Councilor Keddy. I'm the gentleman that brought forward the ballot question, uh, brought the council, passed 87%. I'm one of the charter members of the anti-receiver group back in the beginning. Um, I've seen various ideas, all the branches handed over, various things happened. Um, and to no avail, we're still here. Uh, I became chairman last year, and I want you to know that this issue is being worked on, probably not on the front page of the South Bend News and the Gazette, but it's being worked on. I know that uh, we have a lot of things in South Bend that are going on, but this issue is the top issue. I, I, I would wish that you, I went to the chairman of education, Mr. Evans, with it, with all due respect and ask to hold off on uh, any action at this time. Uh, I was told she's a woman of action, I got two weeks. 
sad because she has no clue on what's going on that's being worked on with the Department of Education. Holyoke, Friday I have a meeting in Holyoke with the town manager and we're going to be sitting down with the mayor of Holyoke to join forces and we also have other, play I have other things that are being worked on uh, on the Boston side at the council is working diligently, diligently to take these schools back. And when the previous speaker said a chess match, it's exactly what it is. If we go into a circus atmosphere of beating the drums and parades and, you know, and everything that we want to do, have at it, it's your choice. You have the people. The people said 87%. We want our schools back. And remember, you could say the council's duty. I got all confused at the council meeting when uh, one of the school committee members got up and started talking about, you know, the council should do something. When the way the power goes is the people are the power. That's the utmost vote that you can have. Anything that is done besides the ballot question is below the people, the, the government, the school committee. Uh, we all answer to the ballot. We all answer to the people. People are turning around and saying, if council doesn't do anything, Chairman's quote, we have three seats up, you can change it. I give you the best of luck if you'd like to do that. If Southbridge does not go together on this, we're going to hurt ourselves. And I asked for more time so we could work on what we're, we have a lot of irons in the fire long before this two removal of these teachers and the issues that it came up in the protest. We were already in the shoot 30 days before that on the workings. I'm asking, I'm pleading to the subcommittee, do not vote for this. Postpone it, suspend it. I'm not against it. I'm against it in the timing that it's going to happen. It's still going to hurt Southbridge. We need to not have this happen now. Now, a month from now, one, there's, there's a lot of stuff going on with the Commission of Education and the Board of Education. And a lot that nobody knows what's going on in this room. And I think that what we have to do is give ourselves some time. I'm a guy that doesn't like to sit on the sideline, if anybody knows who I am. I like to get things done, but sometimes it's not done with ballyhoo and build up and, you know, a circus type atmosphere. There's a time for that. This is not the time. And I plead with the committee and the citizens here. I am a big advocate of education. The, the new middle high school, the things we've done, are all about kids. Coaching Bob Warner for 17 years, it's about kids. But right now, my political savvy tells me this is not a good time to do this. And I hope that you consider voting to postpone down the line, or to, and if it's insistent that you vote on it, vote no. That's just a, a recommendation from the Chairman of the Council for all the irons that we have in the fire long before the protest. We don't need to blow up our opportunities. Thank you. I'd like to, I, I think, Councilor Marchetti and then um, Beth. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman, for you. Um, I know that there's a lot of problems at the school, and I'm all, all in favor of uh, getting the receivership out. Um, but I've seen a lot of things in this past year now. We, we wrote a letter about the flyback. Nothing came of that. We talked about taking some school buses to Boston. Nothing happened with that. Uh, we voted, we voted overwhelmingly to, to end receivership, and nothing came of that. I would, I think the school bus idea is an excellent idea. I'm ready to go to Boston with you anytime you want to go, but I don't really want to talk to the uh, Board of Education, and I don't really want to talk to the uh, legislators. I think we should go right to the governor's office, set it up, get an audience with her. She's the one that made the promise to end receivership, and let the newspapers know, let the Boston TV stations know, let them all know we're coming and that's what we should do. Go to Boston and talk to her about, about it. As far as this thing here tonight goes, I think uh, I would rather see the school committee uh, tackle this issue first before it comes back to us. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, so I just had a question, and I don't really care who answers it, but um, uh, from a different from political perspective, um, I guess I don't understand the choice to wait, and maybe you can better explain it, um, rather than do it first 
and then, you know, you don't have a choice then, right? Like, the town voted, the committee voted, the school council voted, everybody in Southbridge is united on this, and now do something about it, versus wait, and then, like, do it. I just, I guess I just don't understand why waiting is, yeah. it may be <coughs> better. So, um, I also agree with you. I think that we have waited. And I think Russell Johnson was the interim between, he was the interim um, receiver at one point. And so there really isn't, it isn't about them. It's more about showing the unity in our community and for the town council to support what our citizens, oh, our council chamber was full of people asking us to do this. So you certainly can vote to postpone, but that also sends a message to our community who is asking us to do this. That's why it's on here. I don't do things for myself. I do things in response to our community who is asking us to do this. And so I'm going to... I have a second piece to the question. Sorry. Oh, like go a ahead. Second piece. Um, and I guess maybe also I just don't quite understand. If, if we vote a vote of no confidence for the law specifically, is, isn't that separate than just like really pushing to end receivership? Like can you, can you vote to just replace him in the meantime while you do that negotiation? Is that a possible? I don't know. It's a real question. Do you mind? I appreciate it, Madam Chair. Um, just to answer some of your concerns, and um, if, if you don't know me, I used to work for the school system for plenty of years, and, and um, I'm totally against the receivership. But, I mean, first of all, hearing from the chairman that there's a meeting on Friday with the mayor of Holyoke who's also involved in receivership, and they're putting together something at this meeting, I mean, First of all, that is one good reason to wait. Second of all, there's no chance that the receivership ends before July 1st. Like, this this is going to go through the whole school year. So it, this vote of no confidence doesn't do anything. It, it, it's just uh, the town council reiterating that we don't like receivership, which we've already said. However, if the ball is in their court, which it is because they're changing the commissioner, the chairman has pointed out there's a lot of moving pieces going on that... A lot of irons that the council's had in the fire for a long time. If we can materialize a couple things while the commissioner changes and the commissioner makes the mistake, I mean, their backs are against the wall right now. We're about to, I hate to use the football analogy, but we're about to get the ball back probably mid to late March and score the winning touchdown drive and get the receivership. Then this would be well poised. to. That's where you're going to try to win the game. Not while they're backing themselves up against the wall. We've, we've done so many things, and the, this will never be possible without the fact that the citizens came out and voted 87% in June. I mean, this is the, uh, a question that the chairman put together. He's not against this item. It's just, why would you waste a tool that can help you so much more, in possibly in about 30 days, when it can help you virtually not at all right now? The, the state, the spotlight is on them. Give them three or four weeks. Villar and them, they always mess up. They're going to mess up some more, and then you do what you need to do. But now is a little premature. We can't say it enough. The chairman has a meeting with the mayor of Holyoke. I mean, receivership is not coming back to us before July 1st. What's the point? Why would you waste, why would you waste this? This is our best shot. And we need to do it together as a community. And again, we couldn't have done this without you guys coming out in June and, and helping us get to this point. But we all need to stand together and hold back and wait for the right time to, to, to I don't want to say the word attack, but you know, you got to wait for the right time to give your, to give your all. Um, tell if you could, I, I'm not really supposed to engage in conversation with you like this, but I mean, could you tell me what the purpose would be to do it now instead of four weeks from now after a lot more, we've built up a lot more ammunition, they've screwed up their change in commissioner, the commissioner doesn't care, and how, can you tell me why it would be more valuable now than, than later? I, and I'm, it's a rhetorical question because I think you can see clearly what I'm saying. You could see why if you just make this later in March. 
together, we will have better success for our children. If you do this now, this is a disservice to our children and our youth. You need to wait about a month and then it is going to be so much more forceful and meaningful. And when we, after we, after we have more things materialized from the chairman's meeting with Holyoke and, and anything else that's happening, the, the power of this vote of no confidence, like Councilor Marchetti said, should go to the school committee first. And when, in about a month after things happen or don't happen, it work. I would, I would love to do this regardless. But there's a chance that Russell Johnston comes up and says, I'm a new commissioner and we're ending receivership right now, like July 1st. And it, it, I doubt he's going to do that. Then that's when you make the no, vote of no confidence. I mean, it's a waste of your best shot, uh, much more well placed in a month. All right. uh, I'm going to let Stephanie, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, um, so I I agree with Councillor Montigny. I agree with Councillor Lazo and um, Councillor Marchetti. However, I I also agree with the agenda item. But I feel at this point, as being an observer and also a participant in this movement, that basically was started, unfortunately by the two teachers um, being walked out of the school and then the students taking action, um, that at this point, the best move would be for the school committee to stand united and make a formal request to end the receivership to DESE as a united front. And the reason being is because if you read chapter 69, um, of the law for receivership, it states throughout repetitively that the school committee can request to end receivership from DESE. So I think at this time, a formal request should be issued by the school committee as a whole, as a united front, um, and put that in motion first before this agenda item moves to be voted on. And the fact that both Holyoke and Lawrence now are in process to also end their receivership is a plus for Southbridge to also go in that direction. And having this meeting um, in place is a good move because at the <coughs> of the meeting, we came to the podium and we asked the town council to work with us and not to do something. We asked for them to work with us and they heard us because <coughs> at council forum, that was said over and over again, that they appreciated that we asked them to work with us. And they have responded, and they are saying they are going to work with us, from what I'm hearing tonight. So I'm in agreement with what the counselors are saying at this point. I feel the next move should actually come from the school committee in the form of a written request to DESE to end receivership. Thank you. Oh, go ahead. I'll come back over here after. Go ahead. First of all, just a couple of days ago, last week, Holyoke requested to be, get off of the receivership. And they said, absolutely not. You're not ready. So I don't know what the meeting is about. I don't know what's going on behind closed doors, why you want to wait. But they've waited seven years now. The momentum is it's going. I don't want to even see it start for a month or whatever. It killed that momentum. And the school committee has absolutely no power. But I'm sure at the next meeting, if it's if they can even do it, I'm sure they will give a vote of no confidence. And Mr. Lazo, I respect you that you said it's not the town council, it's not the school committee, it's the people. The people are the ones who have the power. They got this momentum going to back their teachers, students, everything that's been going on up there. And I know you're saying you're all for ending it. And if you're really all for ending it, vote. Give it a vote of no confidence. Thank you. Can I just so through you, I, 
and this is, I don't want to show you, wants to speak, but to this point, I had worked with the chairman after we had the meeting on Monday, and people that know me know how I advocate for schools wholeheartedly. I've been involved in schools for a long time and were part of every process throughout. And as town manager, I, when I did my interview, I said my goal was to end receivership as well. After that meeting, and I have the full history, I, I, I do understand what the teacher's going for. I have a daughter-in-law that teaches at the middle school that has worked at that middle school currently. Um, and the message was heard loud and clear. So the first call through the chair was, I'm going to call Holyoke because we got the message that they said no to Holyoke. Right? And the momentum is with Holyoke now to say, hey, what I read online was when they said no, a blanket no, was Holyoke responded with, well, you're not giving us what the benchmarks are, what the exit plan is, what the next steps are. Those are the same things that I said as town council chairman and now as town manager and working with the council to say, what are your benchmarks? How do we get our receivership? And the goal and the reason why I would support not voting on this today, maybe not wait a month, but give us maybe two weeks, the goal to meet with Holyoke Mayor. The Holyoke Mayor was very on board when I picked up the phone and said, hey, my council chair and I would like to come out and meet with you to talk about where you're at, what happened with the commissioner, how can we work together, because in unity there is strength. That is the model of the chief of police that I live every day. I was a police chief. That's the model. In unity there is strength. We have a community that, yes, if we've worked, oh, it's been the school side, the town side. The biggest thing when they said they took us over was there was no unity between school and town, right? Read the reports, right? They said the town council didn't support the school. Well, if we can go together, if the school committee and the town now says, what's our comprehensive plan to come out of receivership, right? And we're, we're going to work together. And then we go to, Hol uh, when we work with Holyoke and get a sense of where do you want, now, he wanted me to bring legislators. We said, let's have a strategic meeting first with our council chairman and the mayor and their vice chairman to say, how can we work as two communities now with huge student populations that are very similar in demographics, social economic status, the same issues. How can we as now two communities on different sides of the state come together to say, and we're all in the same boat. We all say we don't agree with receivership. We don't have faith in the receivership. This is just a symbolic vote to say no confidence. Okay, I think they got the message already that we don't have any confidence in the receivership. So a symbolic vote. But how can we give us a couple weeks to say, how can we work together and bring these two communities together to go to Boston and say enough is enough. We're taking back our towns. You've given us no voice no pathway, and this is wrong. And if we can get legislators from the Holyoke side and our designators together and communities of teachers and school committees, I want to go out there and say, what did you do to, Ms. Rivers, it was an excellent point. What did you do as a school committee in Holyoke to petition, because they already petitioned. We have a petition. How did you petition? What were your benchmarks? Why did you go to them and then give you a blanket no? But we want to understand that as council and town manager to bring back to the schools and bring back to this community about what is our pathway and how, what did you do that they said no, what do we have to do and how can we bring it together. So I think that's the mission that we have in the immediacy to get this done and, and bring that strong voice. Thank you. Right. Um, I think Martina was next and then Beth and then I'll come back here to Kathy. I'm Martina Shea, 163 High Street. I'm chairman of the school committee, um, much maligned right now. We, uh, those of you who have followed politics in Southbridge for a lot of times, have known that uh, Mr. Lazo and I do not always agree. The chairman will tell you that I wrote her a note this week that sounded exactly like Mr. Lazo. We are mad. We are very, very mad. Our teachers are mad. Our kids are mad. Our parents are mad. Our community is mad. But you don't act out of mad. 
you make a plan, you make steps. Our town manager and our chair of the town council are going to meet with the people in Holyoke. I was thinking about this this morning, and it seems that each time the state took some community over, they ratcheted it down a little. Um, Lawrence has a, like a, um, a company that runs their school, and they're out looking for a new superintendent. I, assuming they're going to look for a superintendent, they want to stay for a while under a new guidance. Uh, Holyoke was allowed to have their school committee function, but not really take votes. Um, by the time they got to Southbridge, they wouldn't let us do anything. So I got a call from our new commissioner about five minutes after um, the other commissioner left saying we need to start right now. We need to get you guys trained right now. I will be out very soon. I took that to mean that things are changing in DC. If he's the commissioner, we gotta give him a chance. It's like you got a new quarterback. You gotta give him a little chance. You can't say he dropped the first ball, that's it, it's done. I really am asking you to give the commissioner a chance. Don't shoot him before he starts. Please listen and give them a chance. I hate admitting I want to give DC a chance. Uh, I've been beaten up a bunch of times for that. But this time, this time the quarterback is different. Beth uh, and then Cassie. So I have just two questions again. Um, the first is if the motion today or movement or whatever is to postpone, uh, is there a way to put like a date on that to revisit? Um, is question number one. Um, I think that would be really important if that's the motion um, carried tonight. Uh, and the second is um, my second part of my question before wasn't really answered in that can is it possible to vote specifically to just request the law to be removed and not receivership as a whole in the meantime while you gather the rest of your irons? These are good questions. Um, my understanding is that in a subcommittee um, that it should be either move one way or the other to town council and town council either postpones it or whatever. But in a subcommittee, we vote yay or nay that we're going to recommend it, that it cannot just die here. So that is my understanding. You can postpone. Um, And then the second question, what was that about um, just... Is there like a third possibility of specifically asking for a large be removed in the meantime while you gather your political irons on the other side and try to do it so that it doesn't set Johnston, but in the meantime our students still are not having to continue under somebody that we frankly know it's not. I would entertain a motion to amend <clears throat> to amend the item. I to say that. that. That was just a, is that a possibility? That it can be amended to say that instead. Um, Kathy and then Councilor Lazo. I don't know, I just, I just feel these, these students and the most recent teachers who have come forward, there have been other teachers too, need to know that we have their backs and that you have their backs. Putting it off, putting it off. These students and teachers finally said, enough, ridiculous. And they have come forward and they have not been afraid to say things that have been going on and not, you know, certain people stay in their little offices and hide behind whatever, thinking 
it's just going to go away. Like the first day of the um, protest, Jessica, my daughter, and I were there just to see what was going on, listen to the kids. They were respectful. They were backing their teachers. <clears throat> the kids who have spoken at these different meetings have broken down. This is how much these teachers have meant to them. The teachers broke down speaking. You can't just say, oh, let's put it off some more, some more, some more. That's disgusting to me. <clears throat> these kids have been brave enough to come forward, back them. Thank you. Councilor Lazo, and then Olga. Oh, I, uh, I respect oh, every I'm student that got up and spoke. I thought uh, Mr. Ortiz, the student, was. Uh, I thought he was about 30 years old when he was talking. He was very impressive. Um, I am about kids. I had five of my own kids. I spent years on the school committee. I spent decades in politics. I'm <coughs> telling you the God's honest truth. If that gets voted for, through, you won't get your school back for another year or two. We cannot go through something without a game plan. We cannot react because two teachers get fired. Yeah. I, I, I feel bad for the two teachers, but the thing is, we want to react to it, react to it, vote for it, we're all set. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to be sitting here like six months from now saying, you just tipped off the people that wanted to help you. And, and, and that's what I'm going to be going out on a limb right now and saying, there are people that actually in Boston that want to help Southbridge. And we're known as just a cranky wheel, no we're noisy. That, that's the exact quote. And I tell you about it, I like that. I represent the people of Southbridge. I love this town. I'm going to die here. The bottom line comes down to is my political savvy and the workings that are in place are going to be derailed because of what you're going to do tonight. You want to do it? God bless you. I'm going to continue to be the chairman of the council and we're going to move on. But remember one thing 100 people in a room does not constitute the town of Southbridge. 16,000 people live here, 8,500 voters. There's a lot more here than just one room full of people. But I would like to say I represent all of them. I want to win this game. I don't play to lose. And maybe some of you people come into the room and want this, you know, let's go get them. Wish you the best of luck. When you come back, we'll start all over again. And we'll continue to work on getting a unified front with the other community. With, remember one thing, the commissioner didn't vote us underperforming. The Board of Education did. And the Board of Education right now is in limbo with the new commissioner coming in. The last guy, who was the worst communicator in America, is now going to be gone. Why can't we just wait and, and, and get this thing done? I'm tired of being under their thumb. I can't stand Mr. Vala. He knows it. I never sat down with that gentleman because he never deals in good faith. If he would deal in good faith, I would sit at the table with him. The day they put all the senior teachers on a list, 25, 30 year teachers, on a list when they first took over, and put them on notice, that's when I knew they didn't know what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And every veteran teacher hit the retirement button, they were gone. 75% of them were gone in one, one uh, month. So when you look at where we were, and where we are, and where we want to be, the only thing I can give you is my experience and my knowledge of what's going on. If you do not believe me, continue on doing the, what you're doing. I respect it. This is America. If you sleep nights, you think you're doing the right thing, do it. I'm not criticizing you. But the thing is, it takes another issue for it to implode. And then everybody gets on fire for a little while. We had the vote, the ballot vote. And that was it. Nobody was excited. Nobody really did anything with it. Well, now I became the chairman. All of a sudden, we have big support on the council. Oh, I got a, I got a big stick. Now when I talk, I'm not talking for one person. I'm talking for the government when I go to these meetings. And I know that we can make inroads. We've made inroads. I feel really bad with the timing of this explosion at the high school. It's the worst timing for the town of South Bridge that I've seen in probably 30 years. So moving forward, I wish you the best of luck, whatever you want to do as a, a group, but as a council, let's lead, not follow. Thank you. Hmm.
Go ahead and then Olga and then Councilor Dow. Thank you. Um, to answer some of the concerns before, if the council were to do a vote of no confidence to remove Dr. Villar, they're not going to remove Dr. Villar. Like, it is going to have no weight. It doesn't save the children from anything. It does virtually nothing. I'm going to give you just a couple analogies. First of all, before I do that, I have been fighting this since I was 16 when they told us we were going down to level four and they told us that we couldn't get into the colleges we wanted to go to because the next step in 10 years was level five. I was class of 2006. I was working class of 2016 senior class advisor when they took us over 10 years later. I devoted my career to trying to stop this when nobody was there to help. I am the biggest advocate for this. I have been walked out by Dr. Villar days before my, my letter was given to me. I have been the people's teacher that the parents call me. What happened? What happened? We want to be there for you. I was that guy. And you guys are finally here after 20 years of me devoting my life and my career to trying to get this happen. You guys are finally here. You elected us as politicians to do politics. This, what you're asking, is politics. This is not going to change anything in the school system this year. And you want us to posture ourselves correctly. The analogy I'm going to give you, you're throwing us into a boxing match. You want us to take a punch and we don't even have our gloves and we don't know what to do now. You're going to throw us out into battle without gear. Give us three weeks to see if we have our stuff together, our ducks in a row, and then you hit them hard and then you hit them again and again and again. Vote no confidence on Dr. Villar. Vote no confidence in the state receivership. Vote no confidence on Governor Healy herself. We could do a myriad of things, but you want to send us into battle with nothing after I've been crying for 20 years to get you here. I'd like to make a motion to postpone this till after the March 11th Town Council meeting of the following Education service, uh, education Human Services subcommittee. I'll second it. A motion on the table. Second. You can still have discussion. It's right. About the postponement. All right, so about the postponement. Um, Olga, you are next. I'm just, I'm struggling with the fact that you've been dealing with this for as long as you have and still nothing has been done. You had a vote in June, nothing has been done, and it just keeps, it just sounds like you just want to keep postponing it. Um, I'm not from Southbridge. I have nothing to gain or lose from this except for the fact that right now, students and teachers in this building are struggling. Students in this building and teachers in this building are feeling stepped on, are feeling mistreated, and it would be <coughs> detrimental, I think, and it would break them to know that there's no backup. That everything that we're doing or everything that they're doing, everything that they're putting together is going by the wayside. That's what I'm hearing, again, um, I struggle with that. I struggle with that because it's very tough to stand here and, and defend the kids and, and stand up for my colleagues. Um, I was only in the district for six months, and the only reason why I stayed was for the kids. But let me tell you, every day I left that building, I left crying. Every morning, I would sit in my car for 10, 15, 20 minutes to be able to hype myself up to go into such a toxic environment. Receivership or no receivership, the whole admin team sucks ass. The whole admin team does. No, I, I, it is what it is. You know, they're, they're clowns, they're puppets. Um, Villar runs a circus, and I don't understand how we're still discussing this. I, I really don't. And again, I'm not from here. I'm not a politician. It is what it is. Um, I just, I'm struggling with the fact that it feels like we're going against the people who are in the trenches. Councilor Dow. Thank you, Chair, for you. <coughs> Seven years ago, when the state came to take the school down, <coughs> Chair Lazo stand up and say no. The citizens say yes. <coughs> Nobody believed that guy sitting there. I wasn't a politician either. And I went and spoke, much as I know. Now we're doing the same mistake. Seven years later, this gentleman, with his experience, with his knowledge, no one is want to believe him, either the sum of the citizen, today, give him three weeks what he's saying, give him another chance. Seven years ago, he did the same thing. He stand up and say no, and the citizen vote against him. 
the want the state to take it. The state took it. What did they do for us? Nothing. And now seven years later, this gentleman talking the same language, and the citizens want to vote no again against him, and we're going to have the same mistake. Please give that guy with his experience chance. Three more weeks. Other than that, you guys do whatever you want to do. We'll leave it on you. And if people saying council didn't do nothing, I don't want to say much about the person. He keep pushing it because he's not doing anything. Last year, I asked the school committee, what are you doing? Are you meeting? Oh, we have no power. We're not meeting. And now, suddenly from nowhere, they get all hyper up and they want to move uh, the ocean. Give that gentleman one more chance, please. I'm bugging everyone. Because seven years ago, he spoke the same and you guys did the same mistake. Nobody believed him. And now I think, give him another chance and believe him. A couple more weeks, it doesn't hurt. Thank you. Nicole? for you, Madam Chair. Um, I understand how sometimes it, it's it's best to leave the timing situations, but I think in that, if it was a situation about if it's things are debatable and questionable, but I was at the, um, the community forum and um, I heard of a couple acts that were just straight out against the law. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is that typically when a crime is committed, do you wait? You, you, you usually report it right away. Um, you don't wait for that. It's something cut and dry. And again, that those are a couple of situations that I've heard that were straight out cut and dry when it gets wrong with that. So that's my question. Can I just ask a question to that? Through you, Madam Chair. Yes. I've heard this about allegations. Have Has any teacher filed or staff member filed a formal yeah. with not just Dr. Vala with the State Board of Education. 51 A's have been filed. What's that? 51 A's have been filed. 50, but with the State Board of Education, with the, has anybody gone to the police department and spoken to a detective or the chief and said, what has gone on? So we had a couple parents try to go in there and they were sent to the SRO. The SRO, they don't feel comfortable speaking to because that's part of that. Did anybody go to the chief of police or come to us and say, this is not being addressed outside of. I'm, I'm formal. You. I'm formal law enforcement, and I know there are certain steps that you have to do. Okay, and if a 51A was filed, that goes to the state, not the local police. Okay, what follow up has been done on that, or what has gone to the chief of police? I will follow up with the chief of police tomorrow morning to find out what the steps were for that, because to continually hear that nothing's been done. That is not town council's responsibility. That's law enforcement's responsibility uh, to go for that. So if there are things that haven't been processed through law enforcement, I will definitely follow up on that and make sure that it is addressed. Okay, that's, that's one thing, okay? We will follow up on that. No SRO, and I know the police department, I know the chief. I don't think any SRO would not go to the chief of police to say this is taking place. I will follow up on that and find out what took place. And if, it, if there are other things that have to be done, because I know our police department deals with everything every day and has a whole detective unit. I, I think what they're saying is that the family, because I did, I did contact Chief Woodson about the family. I don't want to get into the the, uh, law enforcement. I'm going to follow up on it. But to hear that nothing has been done, we will follow up to make sure it's done appropriately. That's number one. Um, number two, to hear that we're not backing students or the community is so wrong. I've been fighting this fight just like him for a number of years, trying to be the, let's try to go the right way, let's do that, right? There's no momentum that's gonna be lost by waiting to allow us to go talk to Holyoke and come up with a strategy to work together. If the community is that committed today, they will be that committed next week, if you want to be. That's what leadership takes. Leadership takes taking the hard road and saying, okay, now we have a community behind us, right? I fought the fight just like Montigny and Lazo and everybody else and, go, and John Daniel and Dave Adams, right? But there was nobody behind us. We were counselors, and I know I'm the town manager, but this is passionate, so I apologize, because there is leadership to this, okay? There was nobody behind us. We go to meetings and we say, Dr. Villar, we don't agree with what's going on. We want us to 
to have a path to come back. There was no community behind us. There was no school committee. There were no students. There were no teachers. It was four or five counselors trying to fight the fight that nobody knows about. But we were in the trenches doing it. Now if you want to get as a community and come behind us and say, we'll lead. We'll lead the charge. But you need to follow us and make sure you're with us. That much I know. Okay? Because we didn't have that before. What it, what, what it came to was, well, it's town council chairman Joe Van who was used to be on the school committee and we took him over, right? I know what those reports said. I know the BS that was in those reports that said there wasn't a good relationship between the town and the school committee. I'll fight that fight every day, okay? I'm saying if you want us to lead, we're here leading and give us a chance to get this through. That's all I'm saying. Nobody's going to be forgotten. Wait in a couple days. All right, you know me. You know what I did as council chairman and school committee, right? Trying to fight the fight. If you want to follow us and you want to lead so with us, wait, wait, let me just, if you want to lead with us and follow us, come with us and make sure we get it done. I'm not forgetting any child. I've had three children that went through this system. I got grandkids coming here. I have a wife that drives school bus in town. I got a daughter-in-law that's a teacher at the middle school. I know what goes on in this community, right? Give us a chance to be with us and let us lead to make change. Because you weren't, nobody was here with us before. We will make the change as long as we stay united together. That's what's gonna happen. Councilor Chenier. George Chenier, Town Council. Uh, these, these people tonight aren't asking you to give up your fight. They're asking you to give them some time and go do what they think will be a, a, a charge to get us where we need to go. They're not telling anybody in this room, give up your fight. They're not doing that. They're asking you to give them some time and to work on things. There's things that are done behind the scenes that work better than going out there. My question is, when you do this and want this letter of sent off to Boston or to Dr. Vlach, what's your plan afterwards? Is it, what's your plan? When they get that letter and, they're, and, and they tell you, hey, okay, we got the letter. What's your next option? So by giving these guys the opportunity to go to Holyoke, to come up with a, a hopefully some type of plan or action, I think would be a good thing. They're not telling you to stop what you're doing. They're just telling you and asking you to give them some time. And, and I think it's important. If you, if you, if you want to stay on the path of, I call it self-destruction, continue what you're doing because they're not going to listen to you up in Boston. But if you can do it low-key with our leaders of our community, I think we have a better chance of doing that. And again, like I said, they're not telling you to stop. You have a community forum on Saturday, you know, go to those things. But give them the opportunity to do what hopefully will be the right thing. Thank you. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to say a couple of things and then I'll let others speak. I, I think we can do both things. I think this is more for our students and for the teachers in the building who are suffering, right? And so this is a gesture to them. I'm well aware, I've been in politics a long time. I know I look young, you know, but I've, I've been in very successful state rep campaigns that I've helped people win those races. I know about politics. That is, you know, what I live and breathe politics. And I also represent this community. And our students, I spoke to students. They want us to show them in some kind of action, even if it's symbolic. I don't see why we can't do both things. And yes, it is good that our chair and our town manager, no one is saying that you haven't done all this work. That is true. Everything you're saying is accurate. You have worked hard. You have been fighting this fight. 
but our students want us to show them in an action, even if it's the smallest gesture, I don't see what is so problematic about going ahead and voting a vote of no confidence. The receivership law is flawed. Every community, Holyoke, Lawrence, they know that. We have conversations with them, right? And we already have been collaborating with them. There are, this is about empowering families. When you are a victim, I worked in the district attorney's office for over 15 years. When you are a victim of sexual assault, bullying and abuse, it is very difficult to go forward and to be able to talk about what people did to you. These are children. They are young people that have been subjected to being bullied and being diminished and humiliated by administrators who purport to care about kids. That is offensive. And I know that's offensive to every single person sitting in this room because you care about our students. This vote is for them. It isn't for Russell Johnson. It isn't for anyone else. And I do think you can do both at the same time. We can chew gum and walk at the same time. It is possible. We have very talented politicians in this room that I have no doubt will be advocating in those meetings for us. I understand that. But our students in that building need a little bit of relief. They need to know in some kind of symbolic vote that we are behind them. That is all. That is the reason behind that item. So I'm going to go to other people that haven't spoken and then anyone else more? I just have a question and I think you just answered it because you said we can do both. I'm just wondering as an outsider, can we wait? Um, or what would be the the consequence of submitting a vote of no confidence now? I mean, can't, yeah, can't we do both? Like, we can submit the vote of no confidence and also talk to the people at Holyoke and then whatever happens from that. Thank you, Thank you. Madam Chair. Um, to address some of the things the previous speakers have said, I think I was fair making the motion, putting a date on it, because um, I think that makes sense uh, to wait until the next EHS meeting after March 11th uh, town council meeting. I'd go as far as to say you should schedule the meeting uh, for the very next day, March 12th. And I'm trying not to get personally offended here, but I took a personal day on January 22nd, 2016, and I went to Roxbury and I watched them take this, the, this district over at the Board of Education and not a single person in this room was there. And I'm just get, getting extremely offended by the previous speaker saying, we don't want to do anything. We're telling you and the parents and teachers and former teachers that the chairman and the town manager are meeting on Friday with Holyoke. How dare anybody sit here and say we're not going to do anything. Me? Put this on the back burner? I just told you I would do three votes of no confidence against Dr. Villar, against the state, and against Maura Healy and whoever else you want. How dare any of you tell me that I am not going to come back to this in three weeks and do everything I can to punch over and over and over again. The accusation that any counselor in this room wants to put this on the back burner is ridiculous. You want to do something politically? Let us show you how it's done. Have the EHS meeting on March 12th. I'll, I'll approve any vote of no confidence. I would recommend my vote to any vote of no confidence of whoever you want. But to say we're not doing anything, we are literally showing you Sim symbolic vote we're telling you, there's a meeting with the mayor and our leaders. We're telling you that we will support any vote of no confidence in three weeks after these things materialize. How dare anybody say we're playing the waiting game? I've been here for 20 years, and today's the first time. The first time. All set? I don't know if I put dates on and time. And the thing that I'm trying to say is the meeting with the mayor is step one 
There are other things going on that I do not want to speak about um, that this would harm. Okay? Now, you can talk to Mr. Marchetti over there, my good friend. A lot of guys go out politically and go try and do things and get it done. And it doesn't get done. And then I get the call and I get it done. The reason why is because my politics is different. Winning in politics is not the value who am built on. I respect all your experience, Madam Chairman, but you're out to lunch on this one. You're out to lunch, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm calling you out because I know what's going on. And I do have the inside track. And I don't want to ruin it with a vote of confidence. It's going to do nothing except harm the process that the chairman and myself is bigger than Holyoke. Again, I stood in that room when they took us over. The Spanish community showed up in droves. You were there. Take us over. We're racist. Take us over. Take us over. Go to Boston. We're standing there. And our own town councils are sitting there. Take it over. Take it over. And I said it then and I say it now. You didn't listen. You got everything you deserved. Now, I'm still fighting the same fight from back then. Only this time, I'm the chairman of the town council. I, and I do have a unified council behind me. I don't need 100 people to tell me what's right and wrong. I grew up learning about right and wrong. And we're going to move forward on this. You are totally, it's up to the council. And I always tell you guys, you say this members, vote your conscience. If this is really what you think is going to get our district back, I urge you to vote for it. But I'm telling you as a veteran, a veteran politician that has more knowledge about the history of this issue. And I sit here and I tell you, don't vote for that. I'd vote no or postpone it. You want to put a date on it, I wouldn't even do that. I would just postpone it. Because moving forward, there are time frames that we're going to be working on with the seating of the new commissioner. And there's time frame that you're going to meet, work with with the Department of Education when they meet. So if you want to throw dates out without any knowledge, feel free. But myself, put it on the back burner until we get back to you. It's not going to take a long time for us to get the job done. That's all I'm saying. Anyone else? Oh, no, he was just saying let's wait a month. Now it's, we don't know when. How long, how long can we possibly wait? I don't, I don't, I just, I don't understand. Like she said, why can't we do both? We have, okay, you say not 100 people, they don't matter, it's basically what it sounds like you're yeah, saying. Always. I don't think people care for you saying that. You don't think, yeah. And just like putting her down, she's the one watching out down. for everybody. She doesn't know what she's doing. You are. She doesn't know what she's doing. Well, I'd love to be invited to this meeting since I am the chair of EHS. It would be wonderful to be invited to the meeting. And then maybe I would know. <laughs> I'm a technical engineer. I work on data centers all over the world. My specialty is action plans. So I go in and I look at the problem. And from listening to everyone here tonight, the customer always wants a quick resolution to the problem. But it doesn't always work like that. Because when you start to look at the problem, the first thing you have to do is you have to gather information. And in gathering information, you have to ask questions. So in asking questions, you're gathering information so that you can understand what the problem is. So once you understand what the problem is, then you start your research. And in your research, you're looking at that problem to get to the root cause of what caused that issue. Once you get to the root cause, you can then work on a resolution. And sometimes that takes time. And when we stood together Friday that day, and I said, it's not going to be easy, and you were standing next to me, and you said you were doing this so that the fifth graders coming up wouldn't have to go through what you guys were going through. And I said, it's going to be really hard. And you understood that. And so did everyone else who was standing out there with us. They understood it wasn't going to be easy, and it was going to be very hard. 
and it was going to take time. It wasn't going to be solved in a week's time. We mm -hmm. just had the town council meeting, and we just had the forum, and next week we're having the school committee meeting, and this Saturday we're having the forum. So the movement is in place, the motion, everything is there. We're here, we're not going away. We asked the town council to work with us, they heard us. They're now gathering their information. They're looking at the issue, and they are looking to resolve it, and it's not going to happen right away. And it takes time to get to the root, and it takes time to resolve. And so that's where patience becomes a virtue. And so we need to have patience, and we need to stand together, and we need to support our researchers who are going out to look at the problem and find the solution. And I, I love your idea. I love your agenda item, I really do. And I think it's excellent, and I think it should be heard and I think that time will come. So I'm not saying do away with it tonight because it's an excellent agenda item, but I think it should wait at least a couple weeks so that the information gathering can have its course and they can get more information and get to the root. And if I ever make a mistake when I'm working on data centers, then something bad breaks and I get in trouble. So I don't want to do that. So that's why I'm very careful at my job. Thank you. One last comment and we're going to close discussion and take a vote. Uh, first, I want to say that I do respect the, the committee and the throwing out of the option to compromise, right? Um, I do want to point out just as an observation um, that I think we have some work to do in this room as well. Um, raising voices in these meetings shouldn't be happening. Uh, and if this is, we were just warned from talking out of anger and acting out of anger, right? That we need to do better than what just happened here as a community. Um, and I think compromise as offered is incredibly important in these situations. I think it's important to communicate the plans. I think it's important to be able to share what that next step is when you do have that meeting. And maybe the vote doesn't come on the date given, but maybe another conversation is had as to where we're at. But I do think we need a little bit more respect from each other, to each other, across the board, in order for us to actually get some sort of unity moving forward. And I just want everyone in this room to just like really pause and think about that mm -hmm. going into these really big, important, southward life-changing moments. Mm -hmm. To just take that deep breath, really, truly choose the words that come out of your mouth. Because I know Mr. Lawson, you didn't just mean that this <coughs> town deserved what they got. I know you didn't mean that. I didn't mean what? That you that because you made a comment that you know nobody listens, so they deserve they got what they deserve. I know you didn't mean that. You said it. I meant that. But you when I talk, listen. I mean what I say. I say what I mean. Then you, but you shouldn't mean that the town got what they deserved by ignoring you. You know deep down you don't mean that our kids deserved this, right? You should have thought of that when we did it. But the kids. So, but, we, but what we're saying here is that like, we all need to come to the table. We know that the kids deserve better. We all do in this room. What we need to do as the adults in the room is to come together, like you were saying, truly unified. But that's not how we do it. Not talking down to people, not raising our voices at professional meetings. Show them the right way. Thank you. Josie, so we're going to take a vote. I'm closing the discussion on this item. Thank you, Madam. So we're going to take a vote <clears throat> on the motion on the table. Can you repeat your motion, please? The motion was the motion to postpone this item until after March 11th town council meeting. Okay. Motion on the table. All those in favor of the motion? All those opposed? Three to two. The motion 
passes. There's poem two. Did you pick a date? No. Nope. Just till after March 11th. Okay. It's two, two town council meetings, at least. All right. Item seven, discuss student, teacher, and family complaints regarding administration at SMHS and recommend town council vote to submit a written request to the Massachusetts Secretary of Education and the Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education, asking them to conduct an independent review of all Title IX and bullying investigations conducted by Southbridge Middle High School administration for FY22-23 and FY23-24. Recommend town council approve action. So second. Councilor Monty. <clears throat> Citizen Miss Rivers put it the best. Um, I, I'm not going to repeat what she said, but she was one of the last ones to speak, and she put it the best. I'm going to make the same motion to postpone this item until after March 11th. You need to. Yep, that's it. That was the motion to postpone. A motion on the table to postpone. Discussion on the most motion to postpone. Anyone who hasn't spoken who would like to speak? It was just the most the same motion same to motion postpone, to postpone. Uh, so after March 11th. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can you repeat the agenda? I didn't hear the whole thing. In, oh, <clears throat> yeah. discuss student, teacher, and family complaints regarding administration at Southbridge Middle High School and recommend town council vote to submit a written request to the Mass Secretary of Education and Massachusetts Board of Elementary and Secondary Education asking them to conduct an independent review of all Title IX and bullying investigations conducted by Southbridge Middle High School administration for FY22-23 and FY23-24. Recommend Town Council approve action. So there's a motion on the table to also postpone this item to after March 11th. Anyone in the audience who hasn't spoken, I just want to recognize people who haven't spoken yet. Any students? that would like to speak. It's okay if you don't. I just want to open it up. up. Um, and then, I have to then say I'm on. not 100% sure on the politics in this town or what some of the issues are in this town, but I am a hairdresser and I do have a lot of younger clientele and a lot of teachers who I hear their problems all the time. I hear the bullying. I hear what goes on in schools. This generation is the generation of instant gratification. And if they don't get what they want, then it becomes a problem. And the same for teachers now. A lot of my clients who are teachers, they go into school every day and they're disrespected for just teaching the class, you know, like, and the kids feel like they're not heard because their parents are not home, you know, half of the time to discipline them or they're with them all the time. So, <coughs> I feel like if things want to get moved and want to be processed, they need to hear it from the horse's mouth. They need to hear from the teacher. They need to hear from the student, not a third party. Like, and I just feel like that's how things get resolved. You know, it's not it's not a telephone thing where you're telling somebody this and then they hear it a different way. They need to hear it straight from the person's mouth. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Through you. With, with this one, I, I have a different take, but I, I I think it is the right course to have a Massachusetts, you know, have a review of these allegations. I think this is a perfect opportunity where the school committee should put it on their agenda mm -hmm. and make a motion Tuesday night or whenever their meeting is as a committee to say we are asking for this. There is nothing wrong, even though you don't have day-to-day -day governance of the, of the school district, we are still an elective body of representatives of the town of Southbridge, okay? So while you can't 
say to the receiver or the governance of the school district, you still have a duty to the citizens of Southbridge. So there's that. I think this is a perfect opportunity as a body for the school committee to say, we hereby submit this letter to you to conduct an investigation. Right? Let the school committee take that leadership and say, this is what we want as a body. And we as a body can report back to the town and say, this is what we want. I think I have no problem with this agenda item at all. I think the right place is the school committee to take that leadership role and demand that information and report back to the town. Now, if the State Board of Education says, you know what, school committee, you have no governance, great. Then the town council should take that leadership role afterwards. This is a perfect opportunity to show leadership on the school committee side. That's just my personal opinion, but I think that's where it would be better served. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> Any further discussion? I would make a suggestion that the school committee members formulate an agenda item and force the school committee to put that on as a as an agenda item. I mean, I can send them the wording. And we have two school committee members here. I don't know if they would draft something up and put it in force a hand, I guess, because I, all too often I have gone to the school committee meetings and to find out that the school committee members aren't allowed to talk because DESA doesn't want to have a forum allowed for school committee members. So I would suggest that they would uh, request an agenda item of that particular item. Any further discussion? Right. No, I, just, I just have a quick oh, comment. Go ahead. Um, the difference between the receiver here and the receiver from Holyoke is he's from Holyoke. Absolutely. That's huge. A huge, huge. That's a huge, huge difference. He's a new Anthony receiver. Soto, I, oh, I know. Anthony yeah. Soto, I, I know him very well. Um, I'm from Western Mass. That's where I live. I grew up in Worcester, but I live in Western Mass. Um, and that's the issue. That's one of the issues, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, Anthony sort of wants what's best for Holyoke. Mm -hmm. Vijad mm -hmm. doesn't care about Southbridge. Mm -hmm. I just have a quick comment. I, we're getting really off topic because we're supposed to stick to the postponement, but to, to the previous speaker, at, as a citizen, as a school committee <coughs> member in 2019, and as a town councilor this past mm -hmm. session, I have asked Dr. Vlar to resign, and I have asked the state officials to fire him on television multiple times. I have been walked out, again, if you did not hear me say, I have been walked out by Dr. Vlar too, before my pink slip was up. And I'm just telling you, I am fully in support of everything, but you want to go into this battle, there's just a strategy, like Ms. Rivers said, needs, you need to analyze and get it in place. Nothing's going to happen before July 1st anyway. We're not, go uh, we're not going anywhere. That we want to win this battle. We don't want to go out there and make a mistake. These people make mistakes so many times. We get our ducks in a row. This is just another one of them. The school committee goes first. Town council goes second. But really, we should be sticking to the postponement discussion, and really, we should vote. Okay. I would just ask if the school committee does take action, that they CC the town council and the town manager's office so that we can have it as a matter of practice. That's all. I know it was all talking. All right. So closing discussion. All those in favor of postponement? All those opposed? Three, two. <coughs> Bless you. All right. Item eight, adjournment. So moved. Second. Third. All those in favor? Opposed? 828. Eight 828.